Hello student, welcome to my YouTube channel and today I am going to tell you about solution. This is my third video and those who have not seen the first two video, please go through the first two video then only come back to this video. In this video, I will talk about the colligative property, the Raoult's law for solution of non-volatile solute in volatile liquid and abnormal molar mass so to know all these things please stay with me till the end of this video and if you get benefited from my video then don't forget to like my video share my video and please do subscribe my channel so let's start with our topic colligative property now colligative property what does it mean write down the statement of colligative property the properties of the solution which depends only on the number of solute particle and not on the nature of the solute are called colligative property. The properties of the solution which depend only on the number of solute particle and not on the nature of the solute are called colligative property. There are four colligative properties which we have to study. The first one is relative lowering of vapor pressure. of vapor pressure. The second one, elevation of boiling point. The third one, depression in freezing point. And the fourth one is osmotic pressure. Now before going into the first topic, relative lowering of vapor pressure, we will first discuss the Raoult's law for solution of non-volatile solute in volatile liquid. So let's move on to Raoult's law. So again we will study Raoult's law. This time Raoult's law for solution of solute in volatile liquid. So write down the statement of Raoult's law. At constant temperature for a solution of non-volatile non-electrolytic solute in volatile liquid, the partial pressure or the vapor pressure of the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent. So here before also we have learned that the total pressure, P total is equal to the partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. <coughs> Now B is the solute and B is non-volatile. So if B is non-volatile then PV is equal to 0. So we can write P total is equal to PA. And again from Raoult's law we have P total is equal to PA0 into XA. So the vapor pressure of the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent in the solution. This is Raoult's law for solution of solid in liquid. Now we will come to the first colligative property that is relative lowering of vapor pressure. So let's start with our topic relative lowering of vapor pressure. Now we know when non volatile solute are added to a volatile solvent say water then the a part of the surface is occupied by the non volatile sugar molecule and we know evaporation is a surface phenomenon since a part is occupied by the non-volatile sugar molecule so only those molecules with water molecules which are on the surface can go into the vapor state and so the vapor pressure of the water decreases now according to Raoult's law P solution is equal to P A naught into X A P solution is basically P total P total is equal to P A naught into X A Now we can write P solution is equal to P A naught into 1 minus X B 
so we can write p solution is equal to p a not minus p a not x p. From this we can write p a not minus p solution divided by p a not is equal to x b. Now this p a not minus p solution, p a not is the vapor pressure of the pure liquid that is pure water when there is no sugar molecule. So the entire surface is of water molecule. So vapor pressure of pure water will be higher. P solution means the moment you add a sugar, a part of the surface is blocked by the sugar molecule and so the vapor pressure decreases. So this P A naught minus P solution is the lowering of vapor pressure and divided by P A naught is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. So the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of the solute. Now we will derive the expression for mole fraction into molecular weight. So we can write P A naught minus P solution divided by P A naught is equal to N B divided by N A plus N B. For dilute solution, N B is less less than N A. Therefore, N B, N A plus N B is approximated as N A. And so we can write P A naught minus P solution divided by P A naught is equal to N B divided by N A. Or that will be equal to W B by M B into M A by W A. From this equation, we can find out the molecular weight of the solute. So, if we know the relative lowering of the vapor pressure, we can easily calculate the molecular weight of sugar. For example, if you add glucose, then also we can calculate the molecular weight. If you add, say, sucrose, then also we can calculate the molecular weight from the relative lowering of the vapor pressure. Next, we will move on to the second colligative property, that is elevation of boiling point. Elevation of boiling point. Just now we have seen as we add non-volatile solute to a solvent then the vapor pressure of the solution decreases just because a part of the surface is occupied by the non-volatile solute. Now as the vapor pressure of the solution decreases then it will take more heat to reach the vapor pressure to the atmospheric pressure and the definition of boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the solution become equal to the atmospheric pressure. So it has been seen that the increase in boiling point is directly proportional to the molality of the solution that is delta Tb is directly proportional to M or delta Tb is equal to Kb into M. Now from the definition of boiling point is this vapor pressure and this is temperature axis. Now say this is the atmospheric pressure line 1 atm. Now vapor pressure of pure liquid okay the moment you add non-volatile solute the vapor pressure of the solvent that decreases to a lower level says it will start from here and it will move parallel this is solution so this vapor pressure tv0 is the tv0 is the boiling point of the pure solvent tv is the boiling point of the solution so delta tv is directly proportional to m this delta Tb is equal to Tb minus Tb0 or Tb0. Now what is Kb? This Kb is a constant called 
मोलल इलिवेशन कॉन्स्टेंट और इबुलियोस्कोपिक कॉन्स्टेंट is called molar elevation constant or ebullioscopic constant so we can write this equation like this delta tv is equal to kb into wb divided by mb thousand by wa it is from the definition of molality of the solution so this is our final expression from this expression also we can find out the molecular weight of the solute if it is sucrose if it is glucose if it is urea you can find out the molecular weight of the solute from the elevation in boiling point so next we will move on to depression in freezing point depression in freezing point now this depression in freezing point again it is delta tf delta tf denote the depression in freezing point that is lowering of freezing point and this delta tf is directly proportional to the molality of the solution that is concentration of the solution in terms of molality where we can write delta tf is equal to kf into m now this kf is called molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant now graphical presentation this is the vapor pressure of solid this is the vapor pressure of solvent this is the vapor pressure of solution this temperature is tf not where the solvent and solid cut or meet that temperature is the freezing point of the solvent where the solution and solid meet that temperature is the freezing point of the solution freezing point of the solvent is denoted by tf not freezing point of solution is tf again we can write delta tf is equal to kf into wb divided by mb into 1000 by wa so you have to memorize this equation for solving numerical and in the numerical you will be asked to find out either the molecular weight or the depression in freezing point next we will discuss osmotic pressure now before going into osmotic pressure we should know what is mean by osmosis now write down the statement of osmosis the phenomenon of movement of solvent into solution through a semi permeable membrane spm is called osmosis the phenomenon of movement of solvent into solution through a semi permeable membrane is called osmosis so when solvent move into solution the volume of solution will increase now to prevent the flow of solvent into solution we have to put some pressure on the solution side and this pressure is called osmotic pressure and it is denoted by the term pi so write down the term osmotic pressure the excess pressure that must be applied on the solution side to prevent the flow of solvent through a semi permeable membrane into it is called osmotic pressure the excess pressure that must be applied into the solution side to prevent the flow of solvent into solution through a semi permeable membrane is called osmotic pressure now van hoof a scientist van hoof has shown that this osmotic pressure pi is equal to crt where c is concentration 
in mole per liter r is the gas constant t is temperature in absolute scale and this pi is the osmotic pressure osmotic pressure pi is osmotic pressure and it is usually in the pressure term either atmosphere or bar c is the concentration in mole per liter r is the gas constant where the value of r is 0.082 and t is the temperature in absolute scale 0.082 liter atmosphere per mole per kelvin please memorize this r value for osmotic pressure we have to memorize two point the first point isotonic solution are isomolar isotonic solution are equimolar what is meant by isotonic solution isotonic solution means two solution having same osmotic pressure suppose you have two solution here the osmotic pressure is pi 1 here also the osmotic pressure is pi 1 or pi 2 <coughs> now if the two solution have same osmotic pressure then we can write pi 1 equal to pi 2 and so we can write c1 rt is equal to c2 rt and so rt rt will cancel out we will have c1 equal to c2 that means if the solution is isotonic then it should be equimolar and vice versa that means if the concentration of both the solution in mole per liter unit is same then both will be isotonic now the second point the second point is suppose you have two solution solution 1 whose osmotic pressure is pi 1 you add another solution which is solution 2 whose osmotic pressure is pi 2 another solution which is 3 solution whose osmotic pressure is pi 3 and you are getting a new solution whose osmotic pressure is pi then the relation between all this is pi is equal to pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 that means it will be c1 plus c2 plus c3 into r now pi is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 into r so osmotic pressure is additive in nature whenever we mix up two solution then the osmotic pressure of the solution that add up the next topic i'm going to discuss is abnormal molar mass now in the previous discussion in the discussion of colligative property the four colligative property you have seen that in all the colligative property we can determine the molecular weight of the solute molecular weight of sugar glucose urea whatever we are adding in the to prepare the solution we can calculate the molecular weight from the osmotic pressure from the relative lowering of vapor pressure from the elevation of boiling point and from the depression in freezing point so using all the four colligative property we can determine the molecular weight now when the molecular weight determined from all these four colligative property does not match with the actual molecular weight of the substance then we say the solute is having abnormal molar mass then we say the solute is having abnormal molar mass and this occur only if the solute undergo either dissociation or it undergo association or the solution is not dilute so Abnormal molar mass is observed only when the solute undergo dissociation or the solute undergo association. Okay. Now dissociation means suppose you have added sodium chloride in a cell. You have added one mole. Now one mole sodium chloride will produce Na plus plus Cl minus 
that is one mole of sodium ion, one mole of chloride ion. Now, if sodium chloride dissociate completely into ion, then what will happen? In the solution, you will have one plus one total of two moles of particle, two moles of ion. Now, colligative property depend on the number of particle and not on the nature of particle. So, you are adding one mole, but you are having actually two mole. So, in that case, the molar mass determined from the colligative property will be different. <coughs> now, in case of association, suppose a compound, for example, acetic acid, benzoic acid, they combine together to form dimer. Two molecules combine together to form dimer. In that case, what happened? The number of particles you are adding, one mole, one mole, say two mole, and you are getting only one mole. Or suppose you are adding just one mole, they will combine together to give half mole. So the number of particles decreases and so colligative property also decreases. Now to determine the extent of dissociation and association, Van Toof has introduced a factor called Van Toof factor. Van Toof factor. I. This Van Toof factor I is equal to observed colligative property by calculated colligative property. Or in terms of molar mass, we have seen that the colligative property and molar mass of the solute are inversely proportional. So we we'll write actual molar mass by observed molar mass. Observed molar mass is molar mass obtained from the colligative property. <clears throat> now we will discuss the U value of I in case of dissociation, in case of association. Now, if the solid does not undergo dissociation or association, I is equal to 1. That means if you add one mole of the solid, you will have one mole in the solution. But if the solute undergo dissociation, If the solute undergo dissociation, then what happens? If you add one mole, it will break down into two mole, three mole, four mole, depending on the molecular formula or formula of the compound. So, if one mole is added, the number of particles increases. So, I become greater than one for dissociation. Now, if the solute undergo association, then if you add one mole, you will get half mole one third mole, one fourth mole. So in that case for association I is less than one. Now this I can be correlated with the degree of dissociation and degree of association because often it has been observed that the solid does not dissociate 100% or the solid does not associate 100%. <coughs> So the relation between degree of dissociation and the Van Toof factor is alpha is equal to I minus 1 divided by N minus 1 for dissociation and for association alpha is equal to 1 minus I divided by 1 minus 1 by N. What is N? N is the number of particles after dissociation. N is the number of particles after dissociation. For example, sodium chloride, NaCl, N will be 2. Magnesium chloride, N will be 3. Aluminium chloride, N will be 4. So sodium chloride produces two ions, sodium and chloride, so in two, 
3 and n3 n4 like this here n is the number of molecule which associate together to give a new cluster molecule so in case of carboxylic acid n is usually 2 because two molecule combine together to form a cluster molecule how they combine c Suppose you are talking about carboxylic acid, RC, double bond O, single bond O, H, H, O, C, double bond O, R. So two carboxylic acid combine together and form a dimer. So often N is equal to 2. N can be 3, N can be 4 depending on whether it is trimer, tetramer or etc. Hope you understood this topic and if you like this video please do share with your friends so that they also get benefited and please subscribe my channel. Thank you.